everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are so excited today. We have our one of our favorite hall stars is here to talk to us about her upcoming films. One of them is airing tonight on Lifetime Channel. Very exciting, a very charming Christmas town. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Natalie Hall is here. Hi, Rachel. Thank you for having me again. Yes, Natalie, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. We we uh we really we really loved having you on in March. And uh we know that you actually listen to our podcast, which not all the Hall stars do, so it's very exciting. <laughs> yeah, I listen to you guys when I can. And yeah. um definitely when I was first learning about you guys, I listened to some episodes and yeah. you're so great and you have great people that come on that are fun and you have great question so i'm i'm excited to be here and i was thinking the last time i spoke to you was in march i know so it was the beginning of every the shutdown and here we are i'm still in my pajamas just to let you know and i'm still sitting <laughs> in my house yeah a few things have happened would you say since march <laughs> yeah yeah but i'm still you know in in you know eating ice cream every day and just kind of hanging out yeah it's been eventful it's yeah been eventful very eventful a lot has happened but here we are we're talking yeah. about christmas which i'm so excited about yeah me too thank goodness i think that's all we all need a little comforting christmas movies right now all right joy yes oh i agree i agree <laughs> so what when when things first went on quarantine uh what was that like for you did you do any quarantine baking or puzzles or things? rachel i am not a baker um <laughs> i know all my friends were like look at this you know pie i made look at and everyone yeah. got into bread i'm not one of those Sourdough. people yeah i was i was not baking um i wasn't doing any of those things um when it first started i just in my mind i thought it would just last for a little bit oh, no. but here we are. We're still here. Um, I will say I've gotten better at cooking um, because I'm a terrible cook. I'm going to be honest. I'm not awful, but I'm not great. So I've gotten better at that. Um, and what else? I mean, just a lot of hanging out by myself. Yeah. And my, my husband too. My husband's been working from home, which has been very funny because we've just had all these years where he goes into an office all day and you know, I travel here and there, but it's yeah. been very funny being in the same space every day, all day. <laughs> and I now know what he does for a living because yeah. usually I had no idea what he did. But what have you been doing? Oh, well, I it, I feel like I have I was already kind of a workaholic previous to, uh, to COVID and quarantine. And now it's just like dive full on into it because that's all I've had. Yeah. I mean, I, I was lucky because I already worked from home. So I didn't have that adjustment to make, but I, I, all the other stuff that I had that kind of took me away from work or gave me some degree of social life balance have all are all gone. So it's just all my energy has gone into the pod, both my podcasts and uh, into my writing and uh, trying to further my career as a film critic and all of that. That's pretty much, <laughs> it's not very healthy, but it's, no, you're it's, thriving. It's, it's a, it, it's, it, I'm very fortunate that I love what I do. And so, uh, for the most part, I love what I do. And so if, if that's called being a workaholic, Hey, I'll take it any day <laughs> during all this. And, uh, that's yeah, but, great. but one of my best friends is a writer and he's like, I'm thriving right now. He's yeah. like, it's kind of nice. I don't have to like meet anyone for lunch. I just, <laughs> sit at home and I write and I read and some yeah. people are loving it. It's like, I already was kind of a hermit lady and yeah. now that's just been sort of socially accepted. So it's, right. it's a major situation. Yeah. I, I, uh, yeah, I, I have, I've actually been out to the movie theater more than most people because I've found a way we've been lucky here in Utah. It's been open since June. Uh, and we, I found a way to go very, very safely. And so at least for the, for most of this experience, I've, I haven't had to completely give that up, mm -hmm. thankfully, because that's a huge part of my life. Uh, but I still haven't been back to church. And so that's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a big part of my social life and my, obviously my spiritual life as well. And yeah, of course. So that's challenging. And, and, uh, I'll probably will try to go back in the next couple of weeks or so, but things just keep getting worse here, actually, not better. So oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, 
And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's been a, a, it's been a crazy, crazy time. <laughs> yeah. Trying time for so many people too, in different yeah. ways. I hope that we're, I hope that we can get to the end of it pretty soon. Me too. I, I I would just I love say my prayers. <laughs> I know. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> did you binge watch anything fun? Oh, I feel like I did, but I I can't remember. Uh-huh. Um, the uh, the haunting of you know the whole blind manner. Yeah, I started watching that. I love those kind of movies. Um, been oh, and you're gonna make fun of me, Emily in Paris. Yep. Yeah. Um, I know some people don't love it, but. Uh-huh. I really enjoyed it. And, um, when I was in quarantine, I had to be in quarantine in Canada, um, yeah. when I was working on something. So I was sitting in two, uh, for two weeks in a room, I got really into selling sunset, which is, you know, not the best TV, but uh-huh. it was very entertaining. Yeah. Um, but I've been kind of all over the map watching different shows. I know there's other shows that I've been binging and watching and watching lots of movies, but what about you? Yeah. When you were in quarantine for two weeks, you're just in like a hotel room for two weeks, then you can't yeah. leave? Yeah. I was in a room by myself. Um, it was interesting. Um, <laughs> cause you can't talk to anyone. I was FaceTiming everyone. I think I FaceTimed my mom like eight times in one day. Um, and actually on the seventh day I cried cause it was Aww. like, I still had seven more days. Yeah. To go. It's a long and time. I, yeah. And I do love like being outside or, you know, going on walks and it was just a, you know, it was, it was hard, but obviously I was so grateful and thankful to be working. And, um, so, but yeah, it was definitely difficult. Uh huh. Yeah. I think that would be really hard. I would cry too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I wasn't able to see my parents for the three months that I was quarantined Ugh. and that was really, that was really hard. That yeah, was really it is hard. hard, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. <sighs> but I'm glad that you were able to get back to work. Have you done, how many projects have you done since, since March? So I've just done one. Um, it was with the same group of people that I did Midnight at the Magnolia with. Oh, okay. Um, the same sort of production company. So I love working for them. Um, so every time they call me, I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's something so- for 2021. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see where it ends up and uh, finds a home, but uh, it was really fun to shoot. Cool. Yeah. That sounds fun. Was it hard with all the COVID restrictions and everything like that? Um, yeah, it was lots of COVID tests, um, but it wasn't that bad. You know, I was really nervous about the thing going up your nose, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, but it wasn't terrible. And the lady said, you know, she was really gentle with me. She told me, and um, you keep to pods and you wear masks and shields and everyone's really safe, really respectful. Cause at the end of the day, we are all thankful to be there and working and um, we just want to, you know, do our jobs and make entertainment for people. So they did it in a really safe way. So that's I, good. That's yeah. good. They felt safe and, yeah. and everything. Uh, well, so yeah, we're here to talk about two new films that you have coming out and let's talk about midnight at the Magnolia first. So this is the one that I've actually seen mm-hmm. and this uh, is on Netflix. Yes. Uh, and why don't you tell us a little bit about it? So Midnight at the Magnolia is a really sweet movie. Uh, we actually filmed it in January of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, it was right before Baking Me Crazy, actually. Okay. Um, it's a really sweet movie. Evan Williams, um, who I play opposite, who is just such a skilled, wonderful actor. I just adored working with him. Um, so we're radio show hosts, hence kind of like what you do. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we are also best friends, childhood friends. Our families are friends. And we've always just been best friends. And um, I guess I don't want to give away too much, but, mm-hmm. you know, there's a romance and there's lots of snow and um, there's a, you know, jazz music. And there's just, it, it's just so full of so much. Um, it's just a really sweet, good time. And I'm so thankful that it sold to Netflix. I feel so lucky it ended up there of all places. Yeah. Well, so I knew nothing about this movie and then I surprised saw it on Netflix. So I turned it on, watched it, really enjoyed it. And I was thinking there's something about this that feels familiar. And of course, you being in it is part part of it because I really enjoy your work. But 
I was like, there's something else about this. I look it up. Carly Smale, the writer, she's brilliant. I absolutely mm-hmm. love her movies. And I'm like, that's it. She is so good at she writing is. romantic comedies. Uh, she previously did Christmas Pen Pals, which I absolutely love. Uh, she did a Snowden Christmas, which is also one of my favorites. And she's so good at writing that romantic banter that goes mm-hmm. back and forth and making you really care about the characters mm-hmm. and still having that fun, fun, you know, romantic comedy elements that you, that you expect. She mixes that comedy and the heart very well, I think. Yeah, uh, she's so great. She actually came to set one day. She's Canadian mm-hmm. and she's just the loveliest and she's young and she's talented mm-hmm. and um, she knows what she's doing and she's yeah. going places. And um, Max too, the, uh, the director, he really wanted the tone to be quick and, and witty and mm-hmm. fun. And um, he did a great job creating the world and the tone of the movie. So it just was one of those movies that was it perfectly came together. You know, it wasn't a a movie that was super expensive to make. Um, but everyone just was focused and did their job and and cared. And, um, you know, it starts at the top, the producers, the directors, the director, um, you know, Evan and I, we all just, we want to create like a really nice environment. And that's really important when everyone walks onto a set Mm -hmm. that everyone feels, you know, you know, happy to be there and everyone gets along really well, but everyone's doing their job and staying focused. So it just, it was just one of those special movies that yeah. um, came together. And I don't think it's saying too much to say that the two of you, not only are you longtime friends, but you are gonna, you're pretending to be in a relationship, which is such a fun romantic comedy trope. One of my favorites is the fake relationship. But this was fun because you actually are friends pretending to be in a relationship because a lot of times it's like oh I hired an actor who's going to pretend to be my fiance or you know somebody that they don't know but in this case it was somebody that you know you have this relationship now you're pretending to be in a relationship it's just super fun dynamic yeah and it's interesting because she's you realize that they both go on a journey and that was you know one of the reasons why Evan I think really wanted to do this movie um one, because he gets to perform and sing in it, and he's so yes. talented, um, so dreamy. Um, and then two, uh, the male, Jack, has his own journey with the, within the film, and um, they have this childhood history, and um, at one point, you know, you do realize Maggie did have strong feelings for him at one point, but then she pushed it aside, and I think we've all been in that situation where <laughs> we have feelings for someone, but we kind of have to push it aside because you know, it just doesn't ever work out. And right. then they pretend to be friends and then they both kind of get lost in it. And sort of you then realize yeah. that maybe they should be together. <laughs> yeah. Cause their families are so close. And so you have to kind of put it aside in order to not hurt the whole family dynamic going yeah. on, mm-hmm. but it's still, it's hard. And, and I thought that worked really well. I, when you when you're in one of these romantic comedies, is there anything that you do to try to help the chemistry to try to get to know your your co lead and to make that work? Yeah, I mean, it's I'm, I've been very lucky. I feel like I've always worked with opposites that are just so great and lovely. Um, but Evan and I actually we flew together. And our flight was really delayed. And to get to Ottawa from California is like a trek. Um, So we got delayed. Then we had to sleep in Toronto. Then our flight was delayed. We got like four hours of sleep. So we had this like whole journey together of flying to Ottawa. Mm -hmm. Um, So we instantly had like a banter. And we just got along so, so well. Um, We work really well together. And... uh, you know, we just worked off each other so well. Like we give each other, he was great about giving me pointers on certain scenes and we just helped each other. We really Mm -hmm. became good friends doing this. So I think people will see that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I felt like you had really nice chemistry and uh, I thought the, you got that banter between the two of you as far as hosting your radio show Mm -hmm. that, well, I thought it worked real well. Yeah. And he's just, he's really, really talented. So I, I feel very grateful that I got to work opposite him and just everyone, everyone, the entire cast was just 
cast perfectly and we all got along so well. So mm -hmm. Again, it was just one of those things that came together and we found a special home at Netflix. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I really, I really enjoyed it. I think if people are looking for a, a New Year's a movie to watch on New Year's, I think this would be a fun one. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And it has that holiday spirit and Christmas and mm -hmm. family values and it just, it has everything. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it was really fun. So tonight on Lifetime Channel, you have another movie and called A Very Charming Christmas Town. Yes. And why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, um, she, Aubrey, um, she goes to, she is a blog. So she writes a blog. She used to actually be a um, music writer. So she wrote music for like um, sort of jingles. Um, mm -hmm but she becomes a blogger. And so she goes to this town of Solvang, California, because she hears it's the most Christmassy town in the USA, which yeah. she doesn't believe. Um, so she ends up going there and she has to write a blog and she wants to write about Christmas and she doesn't believe that it's the most Christmassy town in the USA. Then of course she meets um, Sawyer, uh, played by John, who's also very handsome, very talented um who's living there and he sort of his family's been there a long time and it's this small little danish town and it's actually we filmed there last december mm -hmm. and it is the most christmasy town in the usa i have to say they have like parades like everywhere you see christmas everywhere it's crazy mm -hmm. i had no idea i don't know if you've ever been there but at christmas time it really is such a little christmas town and um it, it, it's cold there too. So it was just yeah. like a fascinating time to film there. And again, it was just a great cast, great crew. And, you know, we filmed that movie as well. Like I think so many people don't realize like even midnight, we filmed that midnight in the Magnolia. We filmed that in like 13 days. Mm -hmm. um, and this movie we filmed in like 12. Amazing. So they're fast and furious. And sometimes it's, it's difficult as the lead because you're jumping from scene from scene and you have a lot of dialogue and, mm -hmm. But it was just such a, it was, it was also such a great movie. It has so much music, music, Kelly in it. Um, she's from Pitch Perfect. She sings in it. Um, it, it just has, it's full of wonderful people. Mm -hmm. So um, I think people will love it too. So the films that you're doing in, in COVID, those you have a little bit longer, right? So you, the restrictions. The, it's still short. It's still 13, 12 days, but Amazing. then the COVID time is two weeks to sit in COVID. So you're right, sitting, sorry, sitting, sorry, quarantine. I call it COVID. <laughs> sorry. I'm sitting, yeah. so you're sitting in quarantine for two weeks and then you're filming for two weeks. So it's short. Um, wow. but yeah, Christmas and, uh, I, I call it Christmas and solving because I was Christmas time and solving, but, um, a very charming Christmas town, um, was also a short shoot and just, just such a, it's really fun. I, it's really cute. Um, you know, it's, it's like candy. It's, it's just a good time. So both of these movies, you actually filmed them in wintertime. I did. Yeah. So yeah, that's unique. Yeah. So I, midnight, I filmed in January and I wrapped, no, no, sorry. December of last year, 2019, I filmed Christmas, um, a very charming Christmas town for lifetime. And then I had like a week or two up and then I went straight into midnight at the Magnolia. And then I wrapped midnight at the Magnolia. Um, and then I got on a plane the next morning at like four or five and I went straight to baking me crazy. <laughs> and Amazing. yeah, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I feel lucky that I got to work so much before the shutdown, but it was tough because I'm, a, I like to prep a lot. I think, you know, there's some actors that I work with where they memorize the night before. I'm not one of those actors. And um, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was tricky to jump it from film to film character to character story to story but um but I'm, I'm you know but then I got a lot of cute movies coming out so yeah, yeah. was it hard to be away from your family for so long doing um, the one after another yeah I mean my family is in Canada so my family's on the west coast in Vancouver so mm -hmm. I actually haven't got to see them very much actually since um kind of since the lockdown Mm -hmm. happened I haven't really seen them but it's only because when I go there I have to quarantine for two weeks and then 
So that's kind of difficult. And then yeah. um, I have to quarantine somewhere else. Um, but, you know, it's hard being away from my husband at times. But yeah. I mentioned this last time, like he was um, in the Marines. Um, so when we've, we've had time apart. He's, he's now in uh, different, mm-hmm. he's, he's left the Marines. But, you know, we've had very different lives. And so we're, we're pretty independent of each other. But so it's hard sometimes being away from him, but he's, mm-hmm. he's super independent. So that's good. That's yeah. good to be supportive. Yeah. Uh, so you, so you're in this, uh, this town of Sylvain, uh, which I think sounds really fun. I've never been there, but when we did our preview, uh, show for a lifetime, uh, our, my friend and co-host Dor- Dory, she has been there. She said it's really cute. And especially hearing that, it was shot during Christmas time. That that's, I think it's going to feel all the more authentic. Yeah. That'll it, be fun. It's really, it was really fun to be there during that time. It really did feel like Christmas. And we all kind of lived together in this whole house. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we just all became super close again in a short amount of time. But there's scenes in the movie where we're walking and there's a Christmas parade and there's, those are act. it's an actual Christmas parade happening. So it really did feel like everything was, um, it was very organic, I will say. Yeah. So the director, Jake Helgren, he also is the writer. Mm -hmm. So that's gotta be interesting when it's really, really his baby uh, as far as the, the film. Yeah, he, you know, he, but he's so easy about things. Like you would think that he's super strict about words or how he wants or how he sees it, but Mm -hmm. he's so easy about things and kind of wants you to roll with it and, you know, do what works for you. Um, But he's the best. He's so funny. He comes on set with his dog and he's just the loveliest. And his producing partner, Autumn, is, I call her boss lady because she's like a mom of two little kids and she's, she's so great too. So he's great to work with and he's, he's done this a million times. So he knows what he wants and Mm -hmm. he's just, just awesome. Have you ever interviewed him before? Never have. No, Mm -hmm. never have. Yeah. He's great. That'd be fun. Uh, well, so what would you say is the best thing about very charming Christmas and the best thing about, uh, Midnight the Magnolia? Oh, um, Midnight in the Magnolia, I love that there was, it was like fluff and cheese and fun, but it was, it had this really grounded tone and element to it that was nice. You know, Mm -hmm. I I had sort of, especially with these kind of movies, you know, you sort of always have to play like happy and fun, but I liked that she had sort of a more complex background with her mom and her family. Mm -hmm. Um, but Midnight was just like, it was such a special movie. And I think when people watch it, they will, they'll see that and, mm-hmm. and see the joy and fun that we all had and how Evan and I loved working together. And um, it was just such a natural uh, chemistry between us. And mm-hmm. then Solving, I think it's just like a campy, fun, good time that I think people will love as well. It's like mm-hmm. the perfect little Christmas movie and um just a great solid cast so i think they're both fun in different Mm -hmm. ways and i think people will get something out of both of them that's cool that's great i'm so excited that'll be really fun i'm glad you're excited yeah (laughs) because you you watch a lot of these (laughs) i do i've already watched 25 christmas movies holy moly yeah because some i've watched a few ahead of time i've gotten screeners uh but yeah it's pretty intense (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's like, it's like, are you like sporting a Christmas sweater and Christmas hat and saying Merry Christmas already? <laughs> pretty much. I have the Santa hat at my disposal at all times. Well, ready to go. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, I, I think I somehow lucked out where my job is to watch Christmas movies. I don't know how, I, I think I scored the best. You did. You really did. The best job. <laughs> You get to be in like joyful love and happiness and candy canes. Right. 
<laughs> all, year, all year round. Especially 2020. Thank yeah, goodness. exactly. I'd like to take a second and thank our sponsors for this episode of the podcast. They are the good folks over at Care Of. And they've been a sponsor for us for uh, quite a little while. And we're very grateful to them. And they have a they have high quality products, meets personalization. And I think that's what makes them special. And all of Care Of's products are formulated with good for you, clean ingredients that are backed by science. And they are super transparent about the research and sourcing behind all of their products. And you get individualized recommendations that come in daily uh, individual wrapped packets that are perfect for getting back into a routine. We all are sort of struggling with that right now. And, and you have, even it has your name on it. They're very individualized. And the way that they become individualized is they start you off with you taking their five minute online quiz. And this quiz, it asks you about your lifestyle, your sort of your belief in vitamins, how you feel about that, your lifestyle, your skepticism, your health concerns, all that stuff are taken into effect. And then you are given with your recommendations for what you should be taking. And that's very, very helpful. And you can adjust your pack at any time. It's like having a one-on-one consultation with a nutritionist all without leaving in your house. And I know when I took the quiz, I was able to narrow down to my sleep needs as being my highest priority. So I was able to get some of the dream team on the go uh, quick sticks and those have melatonin as well as other uh, properties that are good for helping you to sleep and they've been great. It's a wonderful service that they offer and makes things quick and easy. You can have it delivered, you can have uh, it on a regular basis, or you can individually order your vitamins. Important for all of us right now with fall coming on that we fall back into a healthy routine. As the season changes, it's important to get ahead of taking care of your immune health. It takes about 30 days for your body to adapt to new nutrients. So now is a great time to update your vitamin and wellness routines to help support your immune system this fall. Care of his products go beyond vitamins and supplements to include protein powders and boosts to help supplement your workouts as you move indoors in the colder months. So you will really find it helpful for 50% off your first care of order. Go to takecareof.com, enter code hallmarkies50. That's new code. So go to takecareof.com, Enter code Hallmarkies50. Well, all right. Well, we have some fun Christmas questions to ask you. Oh, I love Christmas questions. Yes. All right. Okay. First question. What is your favorite holiday drink? Um, Hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. I know. It just reminds me of Canada and being home and I know hot chocolate's very popular in Hallmark movies. I remember that. Of course. Uh, so you? would you I'm rather have? You too. Would you what rather have? What? Sorry. Would you rather have marshmallows or whipped oh. cream on top? Oh, um, whipped cream. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> that was like a, I was like taking a long time. Like it was the most serious question of my <laughs> life. Like I was like, it's a very serious question. Um, yeah, I think whipping cream. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Cookie or treat? Oh, um, oh, chocolate chip cookie. I love mm. chocolate chip cookies. I could eat those all day, every day. Yeah, very. That's one of my favorites when they're really hot. Mm. Oh yeah, so yeah. good. There's a place I think they have them all over the states, but Insomnia Cookies, so good. Mm-hmm. I've heard of that mm-hmm. before. Very good. All right. Uh, what is your favorite Christmas song or carol? Um, I'll be home for Christmas. Mm, good one. Or Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, because I loved singing that when mm-hmm. I was little. Or Rocking Around the Christmas Tree, because yeah. my family, we used to, um, we have like, every year, it was a family tra- tradition that we decorate the tree and then dance around the Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Okay. Uh, what is your favorite classic Christmas movie? Um. Is Christmas Vacation? Mm-hmm. That I, I don't know if that one is, but I love that movie. Mm-hmm. The Grinch. Good one. Um, and I guess A Wonderful Life. Mm-hmm. Good choices. I love those all as well. All right. Uh, what is your favorite holiday tradition? Just going home and seeing my family. Um, yeah. 
and being in Vancouver and being in the cold and seeing my grandma and everyone. Very good. Okay. What is your, well, sorry, pick which one you like most, Scrooge or the Grinch? The Grinch. Okay. <laughs> uh, clear lights or colored? Clear lights. It's cleaner looking. <laughs> oh, it could. Uh, would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? Do you want to build a snowman? Um, snowball fight. Okay. Good. All right. Would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper? No. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. My dad's mother is her wrapping of presents is amazing, and I just don't have that gift. I'm uh -huh. like, mine's all mine. I'm a mess. <laughs> I, if I really focus, I can do a good job, but for the most part, I'm just like, just get it wrapped. Let's do it. I'm the same. Cause I do it in like one hour and then it looks like a five-year-old wrapped to the present. I'm like, happy birthday or no, I'm Merry Christmas mom. Yeah. She's like, oh, thanks Natalie. <laughs> it's got like tape in weird places. Yeah. You're like, it's the thought that counts. I mean, yeah, exactly. On. All right. Last question. Do you have an ugly Christmas sweater? I mean, I have many ugly sweaters, but I don't have an ugly Christmas sweater. <laughs> like, all my Christmas sweaters are really attractive. I don't know what you're talking about. If I do a Christmas movie and they make me wear an ugly Christmas sweater, I'm then going to take that Christmas sweater. But I've never done a Christmas. Oh, you know what? Solving. Um, yeah. uh, very Charming Christmas Town. I wear a very ugly sweater. You'll see it. And I should have mm. taken that. Yeah, you should have. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> that'd be ready to go well there you go you passed the test yay you keep making christmas movies <laughs> i know i gotta get my sweater at some point yeah <laughs> well very good thank you so much for coming and talking with us this is a lot of fun and we really appreciate you supporting the podcast and and uh i even said in the preview i was like uh natalie i know you're you're <laughs> <laughs> where you're a fan you're actually a fan of the show and so yeah. we, we're we're really excited about that and so thank you very much and hope you have a very very merry christmas you and too rachel thank you with, for having me good luck with the films and uh we're excited to see the new one tomorrow well it'll be today when this airs yes. but anyway it'll be great and uh if people want to follow you on social media how could they do that um well i follow you Yes. Um, the Natalie Hall underscore Hall, I think is my Instagram and then the Natalie Hall, my Twitter. Okay, great. Well, we'll have that in the description section. So make sure you all follow Natalie and you make sure you're following the podcast to Hallmarkies pod, Hallmarkies podcast, all of our social media. And if you're listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That helps us out a lot to be able to find the podcast. And also, if you are listening on YouTube, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which is a lot of fun. And we have our merch store, which has tons of festive designs. You can even get an ugly Christmas sweater t-shirt uh, at the merch store. So pretty fun. And uh, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And uh, thanks again, Natalie. Really appreciate it. And uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Rachel. Bye. Bye.